How to read a math textbook, or at least how I've been able to read many math textbooks with a good amount of success. Now, specifically, I'm talking about like calculus textbooks or pre-calc or standard big thick textbooks that look like this that weigh students backpacks down and are notorious for being long and boring how should you read them should you even bother and what comes after that well I think they're all valid questions. The answer is yes, you definitely should read your textbook. They can be a fantastic resource, especially if you know how to use them. So step one, whenever you're reading a math textbook like this, you should be turning to the section that you wish to study and before diving into problems, look at the highlighted or bolded or outlined theorems and facts. They look like this. I don't know if you can see it. The important things that the publisher and probably your teacher wants you to know are highlighted for you. And believe it or not, these facts, some teachers spend a 40 or 50 minute lecture just proving or verifying. And you can just turn to the correct page and look them up and kind of save an entire lecture. So the first thing you do, you look for these important facts and memorize them, understand them, get your head around them. Obviously, you're not gonna be reading these books front to back, that would be a bad use of your time. So we're just gonna pick out the important details and it starts with these important theorems or facts. Once you have the important theorem or the general idea of what the section is about, you next move to hopefully a worked out example, which is gonna most likely come very soon after that important fact or theorem is presented. Many good calc books do this. They have maybe several examples for each theorem, how the question is posed, and what the general process is. And after you get the theorem and the practice question, you can move on to practicing the questions yourself. And I would tend to, obviously you can do the ones that are assigned, but if they're not assigned, or if you just want extra practice, lean towards the harder types of problems. So I would focus the majority of your time in the problem sets, which come after each section, on the later type problems. So, so if your section has maybe 40 questions, I would lean towards the numbers 20 through 30. Those are gonna be the harder ones typically. Typically it starts out easy and gets harder. And if you practice the more challenging problems, you might not always get them as quickly, but you'll be well prepared for the test because often professors or teachers will make the test questions a little bit easier than the homework questions. Not all the time, but better safe than sorry. Here's what you should avoid. You should probably avoid any kind of application questions in the text or any kind of projects. Sometimes in the beginning or the end of sections, there'll be some unit project where they try to apply the theorem to real life. Now, unless your teacher specifically assigns these type of problems, or unless your class deals heavily with these applications, I would just forget about it. Your main goal here is to learn the theorem and how to do regular examples that will be on the test. I wouldn't spend your time worrying about these abstract application problems that probably aren't really gonna come up again. I know when I was tutoring, sometimes students would give, bring up these weird problems, you know, it was one of the later problems in the, in the examples, and I'm just like, why are, you, why are you dealing with this? Did your professor assign this? And they're like, no, I just had, I had a question on it, and it was a weird application of some theorem, and it's just not worth your time most of the time. The other things you should avoid are the very most hard problems in the section. Yes, that's very most hard. That's how challenging they are. If you look at the very last few questions for each section, often they are either application-based, very challenging, like too challenging for them to be on the test, or proof-based. And if you're not taking a proof-based class, you really don't need to worry about proofs. You just need a general good understanding of the theorem and how to apply it to medium to hard level questions. You don't need to be doing the most impossible questions and spinning your wheels trying to get your head around the deep theory here. That's not what you should be doing spending your time. So if you avoid those little things, what you can, what you can do is you can move on to the later part of the section, oftentimes at the end of the section or at the end of the chapter, there's like a 
problem set that's a chapter review, I strongly recommend this. I don't think many students really use this, but it's a really nice thing to prep for the test because it puts all the questions from all the sections you've been studying on one sheet. And you don't know which question is which. It really challenges your understanding, makes you see what you know. Half the battle with the test is just identifying which question takes which approach to solve. So if you do this, if you do this ladder problem set where all the questions are mixed together, you'll really have a leg up for the test. So there are my top tips for reading math textbooks. I'd love to know if you have any tips and tricks for reading math textbooks in the comments below. Thanks very much for watching till the end, and I hope you have a great day.